Hey, I'm Todd. Thanks for choosing to watch my video. And if you would subscribe it, like it, all that stuff you know, uh, that'd be great. Otherwise, enjoy the video, and I hope it uh, gives you the information you need and is helpful to you. Take care. 2007 Dodge Dakota front brake pad replacement. Actually, front brake calipers. Let's see here. Uh, good place to jack up if you want to get up both wheels off the ground right here. A metal plate in the way, but that's all right. Probably just jack right up here or either big chunk on one side or the other if you want. Jack it up, use safety stands, protect yourself. And we'll see about getting the wheel off. When the wheel's on the ground, go ahead and break these loose, a turn or two, all bolts and nuts, everything will be left to loosen. It's counterclockwise and right to tighten clockwise. We'll get those off, probably 22 millimeter. Uh, it's a socket I'm gonna use and an impact gun. We'll get those wheels off. Once you've broken them loose on the ground, a turn or two, then jack up the vehicle, take them off the rest of the way. I'll go ahead and turn the key on too so you can turn the wheel left or right to make it easier to work on the caliper. I didn't, now they're locked in place that way, so we'll be doing that later. So we got our uh, brake rotor, brake caliper, brake caliper mounting, and our outer brake pad and inner brake pad. Notice the springs here. I'm assuming it's like that on both sides, so that's where they go. Don't try and tuck them in. Okay, so we're doing calipers, but let's pretend you're doing the front brakes. What you want to do if you're doing front brakes is try and collapse the pistons and see if the slides are okay. So we're going to get in here with a screwdriver and uh, try and pry back. Should probably use two screwdrivers. You want to go as far as you can. I'm stopping because my master cylinder is full and I don't want to overflow it. Check the slides, make sure they slide back and forth freely. And they do. <clears throat> then you would be able to continue on with your uh, brakes, knowing that you have uh, collapsed your pistons and they're good and the slides are sliding. So if they don't, then you may want to consider calipers, which we are doing. So if you're doing the brakes, just do that for you quick here and you'll see how to put it together with the new calipers. We take out this 13 millimeter bolt, tilt this up and slide it out of the hole there. I'll just do that for you. Otherwise we're just gonna yank this all off pretty much. My tools, torque wrench, torque wrench, 22 millimeter, 11 millimeter, 21 millimeter, 15 millimeter, 13 millimeter. A knife for fun and a cordless gun. A couple of screwdrivers.
So this has uh, knobbies. All the brake pads are identical to the knobbies. So the piston is going to sit around it, as you can see from the wear mark. Springies. Springies all on the outside, not on the inside, tucked in somewhere crazy. So these are just friction fit. They just slide off. Slide on, probably get new ones with your brake pads. Just slide them off and slide the new ones on. So I was holding on to this because this was spinning, which is a good sign for your calipers. Slides to be free. Little, uh, 21 millimeter bolts here, we'll zip those off. If you're replacing your brakes, you can clean these up a little bit. Brake pads, clean up the grooves a little bit. We're slapping new calipers on, so bye-bye. Slide off rotor. If it doesn't slide off, you can certainly tap it on the backside with a hammer. Clean this up with a little sandpaper if you want. Got my caliper. Couple new copper washers, new banjo bolt for the brake fluid on the caliper. Then I like to separate this, and I'm gonna separate it. And this here is the bleeder screw, so I'm gonna untake, do this one. This is the lower bolt, lower bolt right here. Match up your rotor with your old one. This is a fully coated rotor, don't need to wash it. But most brakes, brake rotors will come with some uh, oily film on here for rust preventing, prevention. So you want to wash this with the warm soap and water on both sides. So again, wash it on both sides for most rotors, get that oily goo off and uh, dry it off with a paper towel or something. Should be good to go, air blow it. Slide that on and put our new caliper bracket on or your other one. Start both bolts by hand. Tighten them down. Torque is 130 foot pounds. Got our new pieces slid on that we talked about and put a little lubricant on the contact point basically where this is going to sit in here. <laughs> Put this on backwards, huh? Funny guy. Ah. There we go. That's our springing action, so then we can drop our caliper on top of that. And again, it's going to be a little tricky because you need to get over these nubs on the backside, of course. So. Gonna reach back there on the back side and push it in while you're dropping the caliper on.
24 foot pounds for the little bolts. So the original banjo bolt is 15 millimeter. The new one is 11 millimeters. These are the tools I'm using. So I'm gonna zip that off with my gun and put it on there. Got a bucket down below, try and catch some fluid. Make sure the old gaskets are off of this. Don't double up your gaskets. So they want that tightened to 250 inch pounds or about 28 Newton meters. which is about 20.8 foot-pounds. This happens to be a 10 millimeter for the bleeder. We'll open it up and hopefully it'll gravity bleed and we'll get some fluid out of here. So what I usually do once it's gravity bled is get fluid runs out and I tighten up the bleeder screws on both sides of course do both sides tighten up the bleeder screws go inside pump the brakes seven eight nine ten times come out here open up the bleeders usually get a little more air out and a stream maybe do that once or twice and then I still have a assistant in the vehicle and we pressure bleed it with someone pumping on the brakes so that's what's gonna happen Go ahead and pump it up. So the fluid's full, we have someone pumping. We'll be uh, opening this up and bleeding. You'll see it shooting out. Could be a little messy. That is air. That's fluid. Go ahead and pump it. So again, he's pumping it three or four times. Then he's holding the brake pedal to the floor or holding it down while I open this up for pressure. Holding it down, holding it down. This foot hits the bottom basically and I tighten up and he repumps. Pump it! We'll do this for both sides. Wait for some good solid stream of fluid. That's pretty good and we'll do it again probably. And pump it. Yeah, good solid stream of fluid. All right, it's good. Let me clean this up with some brake clean or spray some water on it. Start all the lug nuts by hand. Torque spec is 125 to 145. I'm going to use a 140 torque wrench stick, torque stick. Then we'll finish it off by lowering to the ground and we'll double check our torque with a torque stick going around like this to about 140 foot pounds crisscross. And we'll check the master cylinder and top it off as needed and talk about that. Focus. So here's the maximum and minimum lines on your brake fluid. Brake fluid cap just turns off. Just keep an eye on the level somewhere between minimum and maximum. 
brake fluid as I always say can damage paint so just be aware of that if you're spilling so pump the brake pedal a few times and then uh, once the brake pedal is set in place you can verify your fluid level You're just underneath the maximum so that is replacing your front brake pads front brake calipers on your 2007 and other model years for Dodge Dodge Dakota good luck to you